Welcome, everybody. It is Crypto Moose, and it's time to get loose. Mitchell Bouchard, your crypto and NFT investor. And what we're going to do on this episode is get into why you should own a hardware wallet. Um, specifically, we're going to talk about cold storage, and I want to share with you why I use cold storage and how you can do it as well. Um, effectively, you know, there's so many different ways to go about this. Um, but you should get your crypto off of online exchanges. I'm going to explain why. And if you agree, then pick up the hardware wallet. I'll have links for you guys. So smash the like button and subscribe, but only if you enjoyed the video. Only if you think to yourself, the moose got loose and I learned something. So yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. So why should you have a hardware wallet? Why get into cold storage? So let's break this down pretty simply. So the first method, and we'll get into it on paper uh, to help myself out. Most of you use an online exchange, right? So you will set up something like a Binance, okay? So when you set up something like a Binance, you have an account where you can see your tokens and you can swap for different assets, right? Typically you're trading Bitcoin for, you know, Cardano, maybe AVAX, maybe Solana, or you're getting in some memes. But the problem with a centralized exchange, a SEX, right? So a SEX, um, is that they own the keys for your crypto. So you don't really own your crypto. Um, so you can imagine the blockchain, right? You just imagine a big circle. We're gonna imagine that's Bitcoin, okay? Bitcoin's blockchain. On that blockchain, there are keys. And your tokens are stored on the private keys. Now, if you're using something like Binance, they own your Bitcoin. They, they, they have custody over your crypto. So that would be a custodial, right? You, what you want is a non-custodial wallet. You want something like a hardware wallet or something where you write down your private keys. So this, my backup would be words. So I got um, a ledger there, a tangium. Trezor, we'll talk about these a little bit later. Um, regardless, I wanna to explain to you why you need them. So you have a SEX, a centralized exchange, and Binance is great. If you do not want the responsibility of backing up your wallet, then sure, set up a Binance. But the problem with a centralized exchange is if the website goes down. I don't know if you guys remember, but there was Mt. Gox, right? Um, th there have been a few, I just can't name them at the top of my head. But, but what can happen is that an online exchange can go down and you lose your crypto. What was the other one? I don't want to damage any reputation of good um, exchanges. So today we have Binance, which is good. Um, I use crypto.com for some stuff on my app. Um, and I also use Coinbase a little bit to buy crypto. So I recommend buying crypto with an exchange, but you should view it or use it more kind of like a bathroom in and out. Um, so that's a centralized exchange, okay? So the other way that you can store your crypto, and your crypto is always stored on the blockchain, but you have a wallet that you create where you set up um, and you own your keys. So I wanna explain to you how you can own your keys, right? Not your keys, not your cheese. What does that mean? Well, unless you own the 12 words, then you don't really own the tokens that are in the wallet, right? Because you want to self-custody your crypto. So for example, if I'm using something like a NAMI wallet here, this is my Trezor that I can connect to it. Now here's a simpler version. This you can set up for free. This is a hot wallet. A lot of you have a hot wallet, which is pretty good. Um, if you have a hot wallet, what that means is that you set up a wallet where you write down your 12 words, typically at the beginning or after your wallet setup. So it would look something like this. I'll give you an example. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and you'll have your words. So when you set up your wallet, they will give you words, and this is an encrypted version of your keys. So basically it'll be something like this, okay? That's what you want. So a hot wallet is, a wallet where your keys are stored on software, but it's still connected online. So yes, you own your keys, 
but it's not the best form of protection. So going back to the example of NAMI, or let's say we've got a phantom wallet here. So I'll put in my password. Here I've got, um, I think I have a smaller wallet. So here I've got a ledger connected. There's like 700 bucks. So in order for me to sign a transaction, I would have to plug in this device and physically touch this device. So we'll get into that in a bit. So that is the ledger one. But what you can do is set up, this is my account one. You can set up a free hot wallet. So you get your keys, you write down your words and you own your keys. So basically Binance wouldn't own this. You would own this as an individual. Now, if you lose your words and if your laptop's stolen, you're screwed, okay? The big no-no for a hot wallet, if you're gonna have a lot of funds, the problem is someone could connect to my computer and sign a transaction on my behalf. So how do we stop that? Okay, so we've gone over a centralized exchange. That's a company that basically has custody over crypto and you have a login. Then you have a hot wallet like what I just showed you. It's a wallet that you set up on your phone or your desktop. And yes, you do own your keys. The best form of protection is going to be cold storage, a hardware wallet, okay? So that's where you have something like a Trezor. Sorry, something like a Ledger, something like a Trezor, something like a Tangem. And the reason being is that when you set up one of these wallets, they give you words similar to the hot, the hot wallet except you have to physically sign transactions by touching this device, by either tapping this card, by either um, touching the touch screen on your Trezor or physically touching one of the buttons on your um, ledger. So that's what's great about a hardware wallet. Your seed phrase, your keys are not online. The only way someone could get access to your crypto is if they physically have your device and know your pin. So you're adding more layers of protection, okay? So that's the way I want you to view it. It's not to say that Binance, there's something wrong with it. There's nothing wrong. So if you set up a Binance account, you know, make sure you set up 2FA, two-factor authentication. Um, you know, I have a hot wallet. I use hot wallets all the time. Um, typically what I recommend though, is that you, if you have a hot, a hot wallet, don't have a lot of crypto on it. Okay. So if you have something like here, I'll give you an example as well, just to give you guys a good example. If you have something like a MetaMask, a lot of you do, let me give you an example here. Let me put in my password. So comment down below if you have any specific questions here, I've got some NFTs. All right, so if we go to tokens, this is on Ethereum. I don't like ETH very much. I just, I don't like the cost of it. Um, so anyways, I got some ETH. This, if I click on this wallet, this is connected to um, this Trezor. So I have a little bit of ETH there. If you want to send tokens away, let's say from, I don't know, Trezor? If I were to sign a transaction, you would have to go through my Trezor, okay? So we're just gonna reject this. So let's say I go to the Binance Smart Chain. I should have some BNB. I have a little bit of BNB. I got a little bit of Kopi. So if I wanted to send this Kopi, okay? Let's say I go to my Trezor. And what I can do is connect a hardware wallet so when I'm interacting with the DAP or like a DEX, I can do a transaction. So let's say I wanna send max. Let's say I hit next, okay? And then I confirm. It's gonna go through my Trezor. So I'm gonna have to plug in this device. So in order to, or in order for someone to sign a transaction on that wallet, you need the physical device. You have to physically touch this device, okay? so. That's what you're doing. You're adding a layer of protection. And this is the best way to store your crypto, right? You can store, you can have your crypto on Binance. You can have it on Coinbase, but if somebody gets your password or if the exchange goes down, you're screwed, right? You don't physically own it. 
I own, I'm the only one that can get in here. I know the pin and I know where this device is. So you're making it more difficult for someone to hack you. I hope that makes sense. Um, and yeah, the other way that you can do it is, um, let's say you set up a paper wallet or a hot wallet, uh, meaning you own your keys. Just basically think about it this way. If I set up a phantom wallet, okay, this one has 10 bucks on it. What I could do is take this wallet, I can uninstall the wallet off of every computer and I can just keep the words and never interact with this. That would make it much more difficult to hack. So when you're thinking about it, you're making it more difficult for someone to hack you. So let's say the market, we go to you know 100 trill market cap in 10, 20 years, you will probably have some tokens at 10, 15, 20X um, if you're getting in the right stuff, if you watch Crypto Moose. So at the end of the day, you wanna think long-term and you really wanna own a hardware wallet. So we do have links for you if you guys want. Um, pick up a hardware wallet. So Trezor Model T, the Tandrum, I've been liking. It's cheap. It's like 50 bucks. Um, guys, take an online course. I got a free ADA mini course. I'm going to be doing a Solana mini course and a Bitcoin mini course. I always talk about it. Uh, but if you guys want to improve your skills, I took the time and I explained crypto. I explained blockchain, what it is and all these things. So I hope you enjoy this. Um, at the end of the day, like truly, please, Pick up a hardware wallet, even if you don't use my affiliate links, pick up something and get your crypto off exchanges and own your keys. Not your keys, not your cheese. The moose is loose. We'll see you in the next one.